feel a bit like a Christmas bauble and slightly sweating, so um, I'm going to take it off. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I have to. Um, because cause I was um, shiny like that once, but I'm not anymore. And when I was 12, I was really shiny. Um, I was in a, a, a choir and I had a party in my flat down there. And uh, we wore sh 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 uh, duffel coats and shorts and went around the north of England performing to people. And there was one night, we were, we were on the telly actually, there was one night when we were queuing in Annick, which is in North of London, outside the church, and it was very cold and dark and so slightly snowing, and we were, I don't know, kind of crunching around waiting to go in with bags. And Edkins was behind me, who was a you know, nice guy, and he was talking to me about how he thought that the his, his desk end in Heart the Hell Angel Sing was angelic. And as he said the word angelic, a sort of missile just hit him, like a snowball, hit him in the face and he just kind of exploded. He disappeared, and he just disappeared. <laughs> First time I ever heard the F word, really, particularly by the choir boy, <laughs> Frankenstein. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there he was, or wasn't. And, um, there's only one thing worse, I think, than getting a snowball in your ear when you're talking about a desk and that's getting a snowball in your ear with a dog's poo in it. <laughs> <laughs> Kid you not. Festive gesture. We, <laughs> we call them poo balls, and uh, we'd find many of our dog, or even our own, to wrap up. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> Farming stop. Anyway, and fling them at people, and this one hit their kids in the and uh, brought a whole new meaning to the Carol C amid the winter snow. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, then it see this kind of massive punch up. The whole choir, we dropped our bags and we could see just beyond the gravestones these figures running away. So there were two prop forwards that were with me, um, and it was just lads. And looking at Jelly, but lights already charged into the ground, and this, we piled in, and it was, it was messy. Um, I got my face, I'm not very strong, so I was rubbed in things. Uh, there was a lot of sort of kicking, screaming, blood, fingernails. Meanwhile, Mr. Savage, who was in charge, was chatting up, chatting up the woman doing refreshments around the side. He didn't know what happened, so he just came late, running into the midst of it, and I could all hear this, this voice going, Stop! You're a disgrace! You're a disgrace! This is the house of God! Like this. Yeah. Terrifying. Scott. <laughs> and then someone, I don't know who it was, said, We're outside, sir. It's <laughs> great line. Didn't help the situation, he got more angry, and he said something along the lines of, Clean yourselves up and get in the church in your cassocks and redeem yourselves! So we did. And, uh, you know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes later, I was wearing a little white ruff, clean hands, clean face, red cassock, and a surplice with a little gold medallion going down the aisle with a candle. And the guy in front of me, Nicholson, had it, he had a cross, and people had me my candles. And we were going down Reese Road singing, Silent, like this, the irony. And, it was my first time I'd ever really experienced self-religious, self-righteousness. I remember looking at some people, some quite so cozy people down there looking at us, and I, I remember sort of looking and going, Oh, you made it. Well, well done. And sort of almost sort of... <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome to the house of God. <laughs> That's how we felt. It's ridiculous. And, uh, you know, mind the comfort. And, 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 and we, uh, we got to the altar, so the altar, we turned to face that way, face you now. And I remember standing here like this, singing the last verse, and thinking, or smelling actually, a sudden waft. I think I was standing on some grit of poo just coming to my face. <laughs> and I could feel underneath, like my shorts of red shirt was red, mud, blood going down my knees, and my big question facing all these people singing this really pure song was, can they see? I wonder, can they see? And I remember feeling sweat. And I tried to look down, was, can they see? And I realized, looking at that, they couldn't. So I kept singing. And then the song ended, and 
it was quiet for some prayers. And I, I had a wild phone, and I remember thinking, so they can't see. So we got away with it. Is that religion then? Age 12, I thought this, is that religion? You, you put on this kind of weird religious front. Underneath it, you bleed, and you have mud, and you are scarred, but you just keep the shovel. You don't tell anyone. Keep the parade. And I thought, yeah, that's what it is. I really thought that's what it was. And I thought, okay, uh, I don't want that. Don't want that. And the next day, I was with some sheep. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> as you do. And um, uh, I was with Eric, who Eric was a friend, who was a shepherd, who I worked with when in school holiday. He was fantastic, but always struggling. He struggled with alcohol. He, his marriage was rocky. He, he um, was always in the pub, and he had phenomenal language where I learned kind of lots of things from at a young age. Four letter words, maybe. And, uh, and he, he said to me, um, when we were doing cleaning the foot rot, the sheep's feet, and I remember him saying, Sir Charlie, he's a jury, I hear you've been singing in a dress. <laughs> and I said, maybe. He said, well, that's figures. And then he said, <laughs> he said um, why are you doing that? I said, I don't know. He said, wait. And there was this long silence, and I said, why don't you come? I'll stop doing the feet then. And, uh, and he said, well, I said, why don't you come? And he said, he said I kind of wrote down what he said, because I always remember it. He said this, he looked at me, so sort of stood up. And he said, um, Charlie, man, tempting as it is to see you wearing a dress, it's not for me. I'm not the right type, Charlie. You know what? You know. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, it doesn't think much of me. I don't think much of it. You can get your dress on and go and sing, but it's not for me. But just, you know. It's not for me, is it really? I'm a bad boy. And I just stood there, and I just sort of thought, well, so am I, really. Um, and I didn't have anything to say to him. I often think about that moment. Thinking, I wish I could have just said something. But I didn't. I just stood there and... And I went that night, put my cassock on, and did my song, and Eric never came. And the problem? <laughs>